this video, we're going to talk all about gas exchange in insects. So we're going to start off by labelling the gas exchange system, and then we're going to go through how it's adapted for efficient gas exchange. So just to kind of explain this diagram, because obviously I've drawn it myself, it's not perfect, but this is outside of the insect and this is inside the insect's body. So here we've got the exoskeleton, which is like an impermeable layer that helps reduce water loss. But in that exoskeleton, there are openings. And these openings are called spiracles. Suppose they're a little bit like stomata in a leaf, but don't confuse the terms. Those openings are called spiracles and they're found on the insect's abdomen and on the insect's thorax as well. Those spiracles connect to tubes and the bigger tubes are known as trachea or one would be a trachea but there are many so they're trachea it's just the plural and then the trachea are going to branch into finer or narrower tubes which are the tracheoles and these circles here these are meant to be body cells by the way if you were wondering they're the body cells of the insect okay so what's going to happen is the air is going to move in through that opening, through that spiracle. It's going to go down the trachea into the tracheoles and then gas exchange is going to take place between the ends of the tracheoles and the body cells themselves because obviously the body cells need oxygen for respiration and they need to exchange carbon dioxide in the other direction and get rid of the carbon dioxide that they've made in respiration. Let's go through how this is adapted for efficient gas exchange. So, first thing I'm going to say is that the trachea are, actually no, not the trachea, the tracheoles are highly branched. We don't want to mix up the trachea and the tracheoles, as I nearly did there. The tracheoles are the finer branches of which there are many. There's a really big network of tracheoles. That's where we've got the highly branchedness going on. So the tracheoles are highly branched, which gives a large surface area for gas exchange. So it's a bit like comparing it to the alveoli in our lungs with a large surface area. The finer branches, the tracheoles, have a really large surface area for gas exchange because they're so highly branched. Also, the walls of the tracheoles are very thin. So we've got a short diffusion pathway for oxygen going into the cells and obviously CO2 going from the cells back into the tracheoles. And again, this is like the alveoli. The walls of the alveoli are a single layer of epithelial cells, aren't they, to give a short diffusion pathway? Well, here, the walls of the tracheoles are very thin to give a short diffusion pathway. You can also say it might be the same marking point as marking point two, but you can also say that the tracheoles branch and meet or are next to all body cells. So no body cell is far away from a tracheole because they're so highly branched, they're going to meet or be very close to or next to every single body cell in that insect's body. So again, that gives a short diffusion pathway. Okay. We've not actually mentioned the spiracles yet, have we? So let's just include something about the spiracles and how oxygen actually gets in. So the spiracles, obviously they're openings on the insect's uh, abdomen and thorax. What we'd say for that is the spiracles allow oxygen to diffuse, keyword, diffuse in. And it diffuses in through the spiracles, then it diffuses through the trachea and it diffuses through the tracheoles and then the oxygen will diffuse across through the wall of the tracheole into the body cells where it's going to be used for respiration. Why does it diffuse? What is the mechanism? Well, these cells are using oxygen for aerobic 
respiration. So you've got air coming in with a higher concentration of oxygen. The cells have a lower concentration of oxygen simply because they are using it for aerobic respiration. So between the tracheoles and the body cells of the insect, there is a diffusion gradient for oxygen. So oxygen is simply diffusing down the concentration gradient or down the diffusion gradient because there'll be a higher concentration in the ends of the tracheoles than the body cells because they are using oxygen for aerobic respiration. And it's the same for CO2. CO2 will diffuse the other way simply because it's diffusing down its concentration gradient. The body cells are making CO2, so there's a higher concentration in there than in the air in the tracheoles, so it will diffuse the other way. Now, there's a couple of like little extra bits that we could kind of add on to this topic that might come up. So let's just mention them. In the ends of the tracheoles, if I draw some here, there is some fluid, which is mainly water, okay? So there is some fluid in the ends of the tracheoles. And when an insect is very active, it's got a high rate of respiration, let's say it's flying, which requires loads of energy, what can happen is the fluid that's in the ends of the tracheoles can move into the insect's cells or into the insect's tissues. So the amount of fluid in the end of the tracheole is reduced. I'll just try and show you that. I'll get rid of that fluid. Let's imagine that fluid has moved into the body cells of the insect. If the amount of fluid is reduced, where can I fit this? Let me rub off my title. If the amount of fluid in the ends of the tracheoles is reduced, there's a couple of things we can say. Less fluid in the ends of the tracheoles means a greater surface area for diffusion because there's less fluid, so the air with the oxygen in is more exposed to the wall of the tracheole as opposed to that fluid. So it's easier for it to diffuse across the wall of the tracheole and into the body cells. So you can say less fluid in the ends of tracheoles means a greater surface area diffusion. It also means faster diffusion because diffusion is faster in air or in gas than in liquid. So if the oxygen has to diffuse through that liquid, it will be slower. If we remove that liquid and it moves into the tissue, so there's no liquid, it doesn't have to diffuse through that liquid anymore. It's going straight across the wall, straight into the body cell. So the diffusion is gonna be much faster. Have we covered everything? What about abdominal pumping? Um, Abdominal pumping is something that could come up, although to be honest, they'd probably give you some information on it. Basically, what insects can do is they can contract and relax muscles in their abdomen in a rhythmic kind of motion. And when they do that, it's called abdominal pumping. And when the muscles contract, like this, can you imagine muscles here contracting? It reduces the volume in the gas exchange system. Imagine it getting squished which increases the pressure and forces air out. And then when the abdominal muscles relax, if you imagine them relaxing, then the tracheal network gets wider, the volume increases, the pressure decreases, and air is drawn in. Now, you don't need to know it in that much detail, but it might just be worth remembering abdominal pumping. It can change the pressure in these network of branches and it basically leads to drawing air in and pushing air out, as opposed to it just moving down its concentration gradient, I suppose. Instead, it's gonna push the air in, force the air out. Ultimately, what we're gonna say is abdominal pumping helps maintain a concentration gradient for oxygen and CO2, because it's gonna bring more air in with a higher concentration of oxygen and push out the air with a higher concentration of CO2, so it's maintaining the conch grad. And I think we've now covered everything. So let me know if you found this video useful. Let me know if there's any other gas exchange systems you want me to look at. And yeah, I hope that's helped.